Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about how Janet Yellen said that they are not going to bail out the Silicon Valley Bank. And then here today, regulators have also closed New York's signature banks, citing systemic risk. And then PNC Bank decided not to bid on Silicon Valley, and regulators are struggling to find buyers. And all of that is to say, just kidding, the U.S. government is going to step in, and they're going to create a lending facility in order to backstop Silicon Valley Bank, as well as the New York Bank, and probably many others that we don't know about quite yet. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this, as well as technical analysis videos almost every single day. So make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So Janet Yellen came out this morning saying that they're not going to bail out the bank and that regulators are auctioning off assets. She highlighted that this is not nearly as bad as the 2008 crisis and that this does not threaten the entire U.S. banking system the way that the great financial crisis did. She said, of course, that U.S. banks are well capitalized and safe. But obviously, there are some cracks in the system that are surfacing, starting with SVB. And then we have the New York Bank that was also closed here today. So there's definitely some risks across the country. Of course, this one bank and even the one in New York do not mean that we have a great financial crisis on our hands. But it does seem like it's starting to spread a little bit. And that's definitely concerning. And they did actually mention here that they plan to step in and help depositors and make sure that they can get their money to meet their needs. They say SVB had assets valued at around $212 billion, which it primarily lent to tech startups. Obviously, that's a huge amount of money, and it does impact the economy around us. The FDIC only insures up to 250000 so a lot of those companies could be affected by this. And those kind of effects do spread out across the economy. It's not just the people that have money with this bank. If it does affect those companies and their employees, it does start to spread out. And that is really what they're concerned about here. Moving over to PNC, they decided not to bid on Silicon Valley Bank. They mentioned that the FDIC was conducting an auction for SVB this weekend, and the final bids were due Sunday, and PNC decided not to bid on the company. They say this is the largest banking failure since 2008, and the second largest ever. However, they do reiterate here that the FDIC and Treasury Department do plan to guarantee uninsured depositors at SVB to make sure that most people get their money back. Moving over to the new bank, New York Signature Bank, the one that was closed here today by regulators. You can see here it was shut down today by regulators citing systemic risks similar to Silicon Valley Bank, and they were shut down by the state chartering authority. They want to highlight that depositors at Signature Bank will have full access to their deposits. All deposits of this institution will be made whole, they say, and that no losses will be borne by the taxpayer. They highlight here that Signature was heavily involved in the crypto industry. They had approximately $110 billion in total assets and about $88.6 billion in deposits, which seems fairly strong. That means they have quite a bit of cash on hand, but obviously regulators were concerned about the bank. And the big highlight here is that this issue is starting to spread across the country at least a little bit. And here we go. Here's the final article. U.S. government steps in once again, says the people who have deposited money will have access to their money. They say bank regulators devised a plan on Sunday to backstop depositors with money at Silicon Valley, which is a critical step in stemming fears over the collapse of the tech folk institution. They say the Treasury Department has approved a set of plans to unwind both institutions in a manner that fully protects depositors with money at the bank. So they did highlight both banks here. And basically what this means is that they are going to create a lending facility. In fact, they highlight it here. The Fed is going to offer a facility of loans up to one year to these banks and savings associations, credit unions, and any other institutions, they say here. And institutions that do take advantage of this facility will be able to pledge high quality collateral such as treasuries, agency debt, and mortgage-backed securities. So effectively, they're going to have a collateralized lending facility from the Fed. And they highlight here they're willing to provide about $25 billion from its exchange stabilization fund to backstop this funding program. And as a result of this, the Dow is up about 250 points here in early trading. Cryptocurrencies have also rallied heavily and Bitcoin is up 7%. So they said, of course, they're not going to bail things out. But sure enough, later in the day, they came up with a facility that's going to offer liquidity to these banks. And sure enough, the markets do like this. So once again, the federal government coming in as the lender of last resort to support these financial institutions and really stop the fear that this is going to spread across the country into multiple regional banks. And in theory, everything should be good now. 
thanks to the Fed. Let me know down in the comments section how many banks you think are going to be shuttered as a result of this issue with treasuries and weak balance sheets. And how much money is the Fed ultimately going to pledge to these institutions? Will a year be long enough for their funding facility? Or are they going to have to extend that out to ensure that the banking system does stay strong? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. And make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.